timely now, and I will read the order of protection. This is the people's order of protection for the children of Afghanistan and their families. To President Obama, United States military, Colonel Greg Semmel, Colonel Earl Evans, the 174th Attack Wing of the Air National Guard. Whereas good cause has been shown for the issuance of this order of protection, the people of all nations committed to peace, having overwhelmingly made a determination in accordance with both the spirit of and the letter of the United States Charter, do hereby order that the above named and more specifically their Hellfire missiles and 500 pound bombs fired from the MQ-9 Reaper drones operated at Hancock Airfield home of the 174th attack wing of the New York State Air National Guard are to stay away from the children of Afghanistan and their families and their homes, their schools, their places of play and their places of work that is the forest where they gather wood the fields where they tend their vegetables and flocks and further the above name shall refrain from assault stalking, harassment, menacing, bombing, killing, maiming, and terrorizing, criminal obstruction of breathing or circulation, disorderly conduct, criminal mischief, forcible touching, intimidation, threats, or any criminal offense or interference with the victims of the alleged offenses perpetrated by the offenders named in this order. There shall be no more improper touching of the children of Afghanistan or their families with your Hellfire hell missiles and your 500 pound bombs. There shall be no more menacing and reckless endangerment of the children and their families. It is further ordered that this order of protection shall remain in force forever. Failure to comply with this order will result in the people's continued nonviolent resistance to this illegal and immoral behavior. Order personally served at the gates of Hancock Air Base, site of which war crimes are being committed. Some of the language in this order sounds very stilted. Much of this language was taken word for word from the orders of protection that have been placed against us. It is clear for the people who have such orders, we don't know where the colonel lives, we don't know where he shops and where he prays and where he bowls and where he hangs out on the weekend. What we know is where he works. And so it's clear that the intention of this order is to keep us away from where he works, which is here. When pushed, the judges respond when asked, why is this order justified? What are your reasons? Right. What is the threat and intimidation and fear that we inspire in this colonel that he needs such an order? The same colonel who on the stand says that we are polite and courteous and he's not afraid of us. It is clear that such an order was issued and approved and repeatedly approved by the judges of the town of DeWitt because we are a nuisance. We are interfering. We are getting in the way. We only wish that we could be more of a nuisance and more of an interference. And more I would like to ask Mark Colville who lives in New Haven, Connecticut. So the trip he makes to come here is really substantial. <laughs> to speak a little bit about his recent experience here and with the courts of the town of DeWitt. Thanks. I, I would travel a lot further to be with such good people. So thank you for having me. Thank you for all the powerful statements that have been made thus far. Um, and there's one face that I don't see here, and I want to mention, I want to mention Jack Gilroy. Okay. And not only that, um, one of the things you know, my uh, experience in court over the years is one of the uh, the naughty things that we get accused of 
is conspiracy. And many people here know what the literal meaning of that word is, conspiracy. What does that mean? Breathe. To breathe together. And so it'd be good if we could just take a moment here uh, and everybody, if you're willing, just let's take a deep breath and send our heart wishes to Jack Gilroy and be in conspiracy with him at this moment as he sits in jail alone. Okay, so let's, let's do that for Jack, okay? Yes. Deep breath. Bless you, Jack. And thank you, Jack, for your courage and your conscience and your love of humanity and your love of all these people here, both outside and inside the fence. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I could take an hour to tell you about this bizarro world I was in a couple weeks ago <laughs> called the uh, Onondaga County Court. Um, but um, there, there are too many stories to really uh, capture the whole thing. So uh, to echo what Ellen said, um, come to the court if you can, because what you're going to see if you do is you're going to see another arm of the Pentagon. You know, Judge Jokel and, and Judge uh, Gideon, they have identified themselves. They've disgraced their profession and they've disgraced this community by their actions and their conduct in that court. They've turned it into a kangaroo court. And as, as has been mentioned, these orders of protection, which are a, a, a very cynical manipulation of the law, they're getting away with this. They're trying to keep what goes on over there a secret. The, the, the true scene of the crime, and as, as uh, Ellen's sister uh, Claire mentioned a, a couple of weeks ago, um, she said that um, the closer you get to the scene of the crime, the more you are risking arrest. The closer you get to the scene of the crime, the more you are risking arrest. Um, and I've, I've taken example from this uh, coalition here and this gathering and how they've uh, come together. And I've been encouraged uh, to cross the line a couple of times. Actually, um, uh, for this last time that I'm facing maybe two years in jail, I didn't even cross the line. I went, I went over there. Um, we, we brought the order of protection. And we also brought a personal written plea from a man named Raz Muhammad, who some in this, uh, in this gathering know and have, have shared meals with in Afghanistan. And members of his family and his community were slaughtered by a drone uh, a strike uh, uh, back in 2008, I think it was. And um, anyway, Raz had written a, a personal plea to the commander of this base and to the president and to the local uh, courts here to stop the drone attacks. Um, so I thought it was appropriate, particularly because I was under an order of protection. Um, I thought it was particularly appropriate uh, just before Christmas last year to come up to this base um, and walk up there with, with a poinsettia and a dozen roses and uh, the orders of protection. Uh, both the, the, the one for the people, the children of Afghanistan and the one that Raz himself had written. And we simply wanted to deliver it to Colonel Evans. Uh, we were refused to uh, our request to see him and then we simply asked if we could leave this. We could uh, have this, uh, these orders of protection and this plea uh, received. And uh, they refused, they wouldn't even address us. Um, and so we stood there waiting for an answer uh, until we were eventually arrested after about an hour. Now, um, just uh, what, I'll, I'll give one quick story, and this happened before the trial, and that was in the judge's chambers, in Judge Jokel's chambers. Okay, I'm sitting there with the prosecutor, and the first thing Judge Jokel did was he, he decided to become a prosecutor. He said, uh, if you plead guilty, uh, we'll give you a conditional discharge. Otherwise, I'm going to sentence you to the maximum. Now, this is before a jury was selected. He wow. doesn't know who I am, wow. never looked at my uh, criminal record, never did a pre-sentencing investigation. But 
he had decided that I deserved the, that I was going to get the maximum sentence. And by the way, I was, I was given five separate charges for walking to that gate uh, orderly and peacefully and trying to deliver this, this uh, order. Okay, so I said, well, what do you, what do you mean you're going to give me the maximum? He said, I'm going to give you the maximum. I said, well, what does that, what is that? He said, well, I don't know, go look it up. <laughs> and I said, well, I know what the charges are and what they carry, but are you telling me you're going to sentence me consecutively? You know, like, instead of all at once? And he said, to the extent that I can, yes, I will. And I said, why? And he said, because, because I think you deserve it. So I said, was it, is this, are we being recorded here? Is this part of the court record? He said, oh yeah, yeah it is. And there was a computer on his desk and it's, you know, apparently, I guess if we pay thousands of dollars for the, for the transcript, uh, we can find this. And that was just one example of, of the utter uh, partiality and bias that this court showed. Um, you know, uh, and the other, the other part that I got to mention was that they, they actually put Judge Gideon, the prosecutor put Judge Gideon on the stand, okay? Because he was the one who had issued this order of protection uh, against me. Okay, so I got to cross-examine him, right? And uh, of, by the way, we know the order of protection has already been overturned. The very one that I was charged under was overturned by an appeals court. It was, it was found to be invalid, okay? And I'm still facing a year uh, for violating that. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, uh, I, I asked, um, with the, part of the reason that the order of protection is, um, is invalid is because it says that you must stay away from Colonel Evans' uh, home and place of work, etc. But it doesn't say what stay away means. Um, like, and it doesn't say, you know, any distance or anything. By the way, I don't even know if he works here. I know he's the commander of this base, but does, does he work a half a mile that way? Uh, what's... So I'm, I'm questioning uh, the uh, Judge Gideon, and I said, uh, let's suppose I left New Haven and, and crossed the state line into New York. Would I be violating the order? He says, no. I said, okay, so if I came to Syracuse and went down, um, say, to the dinosaur barbecue and had lunch, <laughs> would I be violating the order then? He said, well, maybe if, if Judge Gideon was there, Right, the coroner was there, yeah. So, and then I said, okay, so let's say I'm at a coffee shop just down the block on uh, East Malloy Road. And then the Judge Jokel interrupts and he says, you're harassing the witness. You're harassing the witness. And I said, well, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what, what does stay away mean. I mean, there's a lot of people under these orders of protection and nobody really knows. I mean, it seems to me that they could be arrested for being anywhere. Um, but I was shut down, and Judge Jokel said I was harassing the witness, so I may not ask him any more of those questions. Um, and it, it kind of went downhill from there. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I'm being sentenced on uh, December 3rd. Um, there are trials going on, as I understand it, every month, right? Not this month. Not this month, okay. Um, anyway, I just would ask you again to conspire with all of us who are facing uh, facing down this in these intimidation tactics and and facing the courts here it's very very important to bring the truth into these courts um, and you know it a guilty or not guilty verdict is not is it, it doesn't um, that's not why we go to court we go to court to tell the truth and I'm proud that I've been found guilty and I even I say I've been found worthy okay I found worthy of five charges for trying to bring peace to this place and I hope you all uh, will support those who are going through the trials as we go forward thank you very much yeah.